Hello, my name is Mike Gag, and in this video we are going to look at functions in C Sharp. Now you've probably used functions before. Functions are very useful for extracting reusable bits of code and sort of modularizing them and, and kind of storing them away. And we can do that in C Sharp like we can in all these other languages. Um, so Basically what we want to do is we want to isolate some pieces of useful code uh, and sort of store them uh, in, in, a, in a function framework. Now, every function has two things. Every function has a header, which defines the handle, the return type, and the arguments, and the definition. All right, so uh, every function has the header or declaration, as I, as I sh probably should have called it, the header or declaration and the definition. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and define ourselves a function. Uh, functions are fairly simple. I'm, I'm going to start off with the most basic of functions. All right, it's going to be a void function, which means it doesn't return anything. It's just, it's just, uh, just a, a void function. If you're used to VB, you can think of this as a subroutine. All right, uh, and I'm just going to say uh, uh, this function is going to print hello. Okay, so what I've done is I've given it some meaningful name. I'm calling my function print hello, um, and in that name, we can kind of see what the function is going to do. All right. And then I have these two parentheses. Functions always have these parentheses. All right. I'll show you what we do with those later. Right now, we're not doing anything with those. And then I have another block. Now, it's important to know that I am, I am defining this function and declaring this function outside of main. All right. You can't declare and define functions inside of main. Main is a function. You can't declare functions inside of other functions. All right. So out here, outside of main, I'm declaring this hello or, or print hello, and print hello is simply going to do console dot right line hello. Nothing shocking there. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and compile this, run it. Great. Um, so far, so good. Just everything runs. Just want to make sure we didn't have any errors. Okay. So now we have a function that has a declaration. That's where our declaration is void print hello and uh, an empty arguments list, all right? And a definition, which is this body right here, all right? We have ourselves a complete function, all right? Now, the function is only useful if we actually call or invoke it, okay? Uh, so here in main, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have a little bit of a precursor text here. So I'm gonna do console.writeline um, beginning function call. And I'm just going to copy that, and we'll say ending function call. And in between the beginning and the ending of the function call, I'm going to say print hello, just like that. Okay, and we're, we're getting an error, um, <clears throat> and this is my mistake. Uh, the error, uh, let me mouse over here, an object reference is required for the non-static field method or property, uh, yada, yada, yada. Okay. So basically what this is saying is um, main, our main function here is a static function, okay? Uh, so in order for us to call our function from main, it also has to be static. So I just forgot the static keyword there. Uh, and that fixes our error, and then we can go ahead and see this run, and we see beginning function call, hello, ending function call. Great. There will be times in, in C Sharp, especially when we get into the Windows programming, well, main, we won't be using a main, so there won't be a static, and so we won't need this static keyword, all right? Um, which is why I forgot to do it, because later on we're not going to do it. So just keep that in mind. The static is very useful in console, all right? We're not going to use it in uh, Windows uh, programming, okay? So we see here that our, our function works. Uh, we've gone ahead and we've moved this this hello command outside into its own function. Now, it's not the most useful thing in the world, but you get the idea. Okay. Um, now, uh, so that's our most basic function. So let's look at uh, a function now uh, that will take some arguments. Okay. Um, now, arguments are things we can pass into a function, and it'll do something to them. Uh, I liken it to a factory. All right. The factory is the function. We we put things into the factory and we get things out of the factory. And what's going on in the factory is its own business. But um, so let's look at, at doing something with that. So I'm going to get rid of print hello here, and I'm going to get rid of my print hello there. And let's create a, a, a method here that's going to it's going to add 
two numbers together and then output them. Okay, so we're going to do static void add two numbers. All right, and now we're actually going to put something inside these parentheses. I mentioned the parentheses before, they were empty. All right, that function took no arguments. This function is going to take two arguments, and the arguments are going to be int num1 and int num2. So we are giving these, uh, these variables a name right here on the spot, num1 and num2. And inside here, I'm simply going to say console.writeline, and then I'm going to say num1 plus num2. All right, excellent. And we'll go ahead and, uh, oops, <laughs> and I made a mistake. Uh, you see how we don't have anything here? Is because even though I've written this function, I forgot to invoke it. Like I said before, a function is only as useful, uh, only useful if you invoke it. So uh, obviously the function didn't do anything yet. So let's go ahead and invoke it. So I'm going to say add two numbers, and I want to add let's say three and nine. Awesome. So we can put our own variables. Like if I had uh, and x equal to five in here, I could do x and nine, or uh, you know x and y, or or whatever. Um, but we'll just do 3 and 9 for now. And I'll run it. And we see beginning function call, 12. Ending function call. Fantastic. So uh, now our function works great. Our function uh, uh, takes two values in and does some, some uh, uh, arithmetic on them and then outputs the result. Fantastic. Now the last thing I want to talk about is the return statement. Uh, the return statement is in pretty much... I mean, every C-based language, at least, and, and probably more than that. Um, the return allows us to, to pass some things into our function or our factory, if you will, um, and then it's going to kick things back to us. So instead of writing to the screen, it's going to give us a value. Okay, and so let me go ahead and get rid of this. And now we're just going to modify our add two numbers function. And we are going to say int add two numbers, all right? Um, and this is going to freak out a little bit here because we're not returning a value yet, so um, that'll happen in a second. Uh, so now let's look at the header here, all right? So we got static, which, like I said, we're just using that for now. Um, int, that's our return type. What we return has to be an integer now. It's not void anymore. It's not like, like here where we're not returning anything. We are returning something. Okay, and we have to, or else it won't run. That's why we have this error here. Um, and what we return has to be an integer. All right, it's a very strong typed system. All right, and then the name, add two numbers. We're still adding two numbers, and we're still going to read two numbers in, int num1 and int num2. All right, uh, the difference now is we are going to say return num1 plus num2. All right. Um, and so this is the syntax. It's return and then whatever returning. You could, if it made you feel better, put those in parentheses. It doesn't matter. You don't need to. Um, a lot of times I'll see people do that uh, and it's not working and they can't figure out why. It's because there's no equals or anything. Return is a keyword. All right. So we're returning num1 and num2. Just like this. You know, you can just bake this one into your brain. This is how uh, the return works. This is what things look like um, in C sharp. Now, we can, uh, we'll, we'll use this and then we'll, then we'll move on and we'll talk about some other stuff. All right, so now uh, I can do int result equals add two numbers, 4 and 17, why not? All right, and then I can do console.writeline result. Note if I don't output it here, it's no longer being output down here. All right, so I'll run it and I see 21 like I expected, beginning function call, 21 ending function call. So that worked great. Awesome. Uh, now, as far as return goes, you can have more than one return statement. All right. Uh, so let's look at something else here. Uh, let's do, we'll get rid of these here. And let's create a new function. The new function is going to be static bool is even. All right. Um, yeah, I don't really like that variable. I don't really like that function name, but that's what we're going to go with. Okay, static bool is even. It's going to return true if a number is even, false if a number is not even. Okay, so we can do this. We're going to read in our number, so I'm going to say int num. All right, and I'm going to say, uh, in case you guys didn't know how to determine 
uh, if if a number is even or not. Uh, if all right, if num modulus 2 equals 0. If the remainder of a number divided by 2 is nothing, that means the number is even, because 2 divided evenly into it. Uh, return true. All right. Um, so this looks great, right? But we have an error. And you might be wondering, well, why do we have an error? We have everything we need. We have our return statement. We're reading in, doing our evaluation. And I'm going to mouse over this. And it's going to say, not all code paths return a value. All right? Uh, and in case you're wondering what that means, is what if our number doesn't divide evenly by 2? What if our number is false? This statement won't run. Well, where's the return statement for the other side of this statement, right? So we need more than one return statement. And as a matter of fact, we can. We can have as many return statements as we want, as long as all possible evaluations of code come back with a return. Everything has to have a return, all right? So I'm going to say else return false. There we go. And now we no longer have this error, because no matter what, we have... Uh, something is returned. Also, it's cool to note that unlike our last function, this one reads in an integer and returns back a boolean. All right, we can do that. We can. It, it, they don't have to be the same. All right. So up here, I'm simply going to say, um, and I'm going to go ahead and cascade these calls without a result variable. I'm going to say console dot right line, and I'm going to say is even, and I'm going to say two. All right, so you see how this works is I'm calling this function inside here. It's going to return back true. And so this is going to evaluate to true. And we're going to console dot right line true. All right, so let me go ahead and run this. And we see true. Fantastic. Beginning function call true. Great. Um, likewise, I could say whatever that number is, one, you know, uh, and run it. Oop. Yeah, I, I went over the size limit for integer. So let me fix that. Let me just do 157. That's a little bit easier. All right. And then I'll run it. And we can see it is false. It is not an even number. Um, and so we can use this to evaluate that. All right. So, um, so that's going to pretty much cover everything about functions that we really need to know at this point. Uh, most importantly, you know, is the syntax. You should already understand why we use functions and how we use functions. Um, so this is mostly just to go over the syntax of functions in C sharp. Um, so we covered void functions, we covered arguments and return statements and multiple return statements. So, um, that's going to conclude this video, and that's going to conclude part two. Uh, in the next part, we're going to get into classes. Uh, we're going to talk about classes uh, really quick, and then we're going to move from classes, and we're going to start into the actual Windows programming. So I know you guys have been waiting for it, and you've suffered through these videos, these refresher videos. So uh, fear not, we will be getting to the actual Windows programming soon enough.